Hello and welcome to Antelope News. I'm Enrique Alvarez. Though I know you will all be sad to hear this, this will be our last show of the semester. Finals week is upon us. Finals week stress and holiday bliss combined at the 11th annual Gingerbread House competition. Katie Sad has more. Baby, it might have been cold outside, but the competition sure was heating up in the Ponderosa room for the 11th annual Gingerbread competition. The Loper Programming and Activities Council has hosted the Gingerbread competition for 11 years. This year, they had 33 teams sign up and 175 students in attendance. What better way to celebrate Christmas break and de-stress from finals week than to take a break and build some gingerbread houses. As the competition began, yards began to fill up with gumdrop trees, coconut snow, sprinkles everywhere, and marshmallow snow. It's December 1st, so what a better time to do um, a gingerbread house competition. And it's also a week before dead week where it's like really stressful. So it's a good time for the students to get distracted a little bit. These frosting covered graham cracker houses were judged on creativity, originality, and stability of the structure. Grand prize is $150 for the winning gingerbread house. To be honest, when it comes to this competition, what I loved most is that I got to bring out my childhood passion. You know, this is youth in the best form. Even Buddy the Elf would approve of the winning gingerbread house built by Nick Madrid, Alexis Gondora, Jackson Bruckner, and Veronica Lynn. As I mentioned, finals week is here, so I run around the student union asking students how they would handle the final week of the semester. Are you sad or excited that finals week is finally here? I have mixed emotions. I am ready for Christmas, but I'm very sad with all the assignments. Yes. Uh, pretty crappy right now because I got a lot of assignments coming up and got two, uh, two papers to write. Uh, cumulative over 10 chapters and stats yeah it's gonna be a pretty rough week uh, that sounds interesting actually yeah. <laughs> all right how are you preparing for finals well obviously I'm gonna do a lot of studying over uh, dead week and um, just paying attention in class like always um, what would be your favorite place to study uh, the top floor of the library. <laughs> yeah the library just because it's the most quiet place to study. A coffee shop you don't like going to the library? No, it's too quiet. It freaks me out. <laughs> How often do you think you're going to go there now that finals week is here? Probably a lot more. Probably like three or four times a week. <laughs> Sounds pretty uh, fun. What would and you say is going to be your favorite snack to keep you energized during finals week? Mm, Pop-tarts. Hmm, that's a... Uh... I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say cereal. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Each episode will be shining the spotlight on a member of the UNK faculty. It's our teacher feature. This week, focusing on Lorna Bracewell. My name is Lorna Bracewell. I'm an assistant professor in the political science department at UNK. And I haven't even been here a semester yet. <laughs> I started in August. Um, so I'm from Florida originally, and every time I tell that to folks from Nebraska, they kind of have a good laugh. Uh, I haven't lived through a winter yet, but I understand I've been store for quite an adventure. So I try to be real. I try to be honest. I try to be open. Um, I try to acknowledge that there are things about the world that I don't understand and show them that I am curious and kind of engaged in a perpetual quest um, and model that for them. Um, I also try to make it fun. Um, but if you would have told me a year ago I'd be uh, living in Nebraska, I would have not believed you. <laughs> Since we're wrapping up the semester, let's look back at this fall of Loper Athletics. 
The Loper football team finished the season 1-10, getting their first win of the Josh Lamberson era. Tyke Kozel was tabbed as an All-American after leading the nation in tackles once again. The Loper women's soccer team just missed out on the MIAA tournament, finishing the season 7-8-3. and three. The Loper volleyball team put together an amazing season, finishing the regular season 35-1 and, and capturing the MIAA regular season and tournament titles. To go along with team success, lone senior Annie Wolf was named AVCA Player of the Year. Loper men's and women's cross-country teams finished off the successful season with three national qualifiers. Here's head coach Brady Bonzel with more. Yeah, I think overall we felt pretty good about how we did. Uh, the women's team, I felt like, you know, we came up just short of doing some things that were a little bit bigger. Uh, had, you know, our number two runner, uh, Melissa Davison, dealt with an injury towards the end of the year. That probably kept us from fully maximizing how good we could have been, but I still felt good about the overall outcome. On the men's side, uh, we lost four of our top six guys from last year. That was a team that was 15th at Nationals. Uh, really, and that, and that team was third at the regional meet last year. So to bounce back this year, uh, we were sixth at Regionals, just three points out of fifth. Uh, and this time with three either freshmen or redshirt freshmen on the top five, I had to be happy with, with that, I had to be happy with the outcome. They were much more inconsistent than last year's crew, but we were good when it mattered most. This holiday season, give her the gift that keeps on giving and eating and pooping, and cuddling. The Scott and Cheryl Morris Animal Shelter is owned and operated by the Kearney Area Animal Shelter and is supported by donations and earned user fees. What better gift this holiday season than the gift of a lifelong friend? Visit your Kearney area animal shelter to adopt a pet today. We wrap up our final show of the semester with What's Trending? Thank you all for watching Antelope News. I'm Enrique Rico Alvarez. Stay classy, K-Town.